Good morning. You're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. It's a beautiful Monday morning as always. It's the 12th of August 2024. In fact, it is known as International Youth Day. So to all of our youths there, including me, happy International Youth Day to you. We pray um, and hope that you keep making those giant strides towards a better life and a better society for us all. On today's breakfast show, we'll be looking at several hot topics, one of which Serap urges Tinubu to investigate 1.5 billion Naira World Bank loan to states. Another in the spirit of International Youth Day is International Youth Day Digital Pathways for Sustainable Development. We'll also be taking global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies this morning, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. The mind is everything, what you think you become, and that is by Buddha. He was a spiritual leader in India, and he says this morning, the mind is everything, what you think you become. So first, it starts with your mind. Your mind can do wonders. Your mind can build castles. Your mind can decide if you just want to stay in one place without doing anything. So it starts with your mind. What you think you become. If you want to become that great person in life, well, it starts with your mind. If you want to decide that I'm not just going to do anything with my life, I'm just going to stay in one place, worry about everything, it starts with your mind. Your mind is the driving tool towards a better life towards a sustainable future for yourself and the people around you. So what are you doing with your mind? And it is Mindset Monday. That's why we're giving you this, just to champion you into your week, to change that mindset. It is important that you change your mindset because it is capable of doing everything and anything. And as Buddha says this morning, the mind is everything. What you think you become. If you think you're a great person, well, you will become a great person. And I hope that that's what you're thinking this morning. And as you go about your week, make sure that you're having those positive thoughts in your mind. And because, as it says, what you think you become. All right, moving over to our top trending stories this morning. This first one says, Senate denies fixing own salaries. Well, the Senate on Sunday yesterday, August 11, denied fixing its own salaries, contrary to the recent media reports. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo had recently accused federal lawmakers of acting unconstitutionally by deciding their own emoluments at the country's expense. But the chairman, Senate Committee on Media and Public Affairs, Senator Adeyemi Adaramudu, in a statement on Sunday said neither the Senate nor the National Assembly fixes their salaries. Adaramudu said the Nigerian Senate is petrified by the tattling story of determining its own salaries and receiving a special fiscal package from the presidency. To straighten the records, the Senate receives only the salary allocated constitutionally by the Revenue Mobilization Fiscal Allocation Commission. Um, I know that the former president, Olusegun Obasanjo, of course, is not going to be saying this from, you know, it's not just going to be a tattoo tale. There might just be some level of truth to that but we cannot ascertain that and i feel like with things like this there needs to be some level of investigation for us to know what's really going on because if the senate is fixing their own salaries if the national assembly is fixing their own salaries then that is quite unfortunate because it might it is not it might be it will be at the expense of nigerians because at the end of the day it seems like a few people are cutting the national cake that is meant for everyone so if, you know, the, the media aid right now is saying that is not true, well, we hope that it isn't true. But we would like for you to come out. Can we see the books? Can we see how you're getting your salaries, how you're getting all of that? We want to know because you see the Nigerian politicians, they go out there, they 
you know, splurge with a lot of money. Sometimes you're wondering, how do you make this money? Is it taxpayers' money that you're using as your own personal stuff? And then those constituents back home do not have anything. They do not have good, good road system. They do not have good health care. They do not have good education. There's no infrastructure. There's no development. There is nothing. In fact, let's not go too far. There is no food on the table, which is a basic necessity. And then some people in some corners are making all the monies for themselves. So if that isn't true, we'd like to see the, you know, your books. We need some level of accountability and transparency. And that's the only way we can move forward as a nation. If you're going to come out and say, oh, no, that is not true. How do we know what is true? Can we see, you know, how you get paid? Can we see the figures? I know that, you know, the National Assembly and the, all the lawmakers, they make some quite amount of money, even though they've said that they were willing to slash their salaries for about six months because of what is going on in the country when it comes to our economy. But that just shows that if, if I can slash my salary for six months, that means there's enough money in my coffers for me to survive. And of course, the salary is one thing, but all of the, you know, all of the other amenities that comes with it is a lot more. So I'm wondering what is going on? Is this true? Is this not true? The former president has said this. We just want you to come and, you know, just call our bluff and say, of course, you're lying. It is not true. This is the books. This is how we get paid. This is how much we get paid. And then everybody can rest and we can say, OK, we definitely trust our lawmakers. We definitely trust our politicians, um, the people who are in the who are ruling the affairs of the nation. And we know that they are not just taking monies at other people's expense. So, like I said, we hope this would not be true. If it isn't, then we just definitely need some form of transparency and we need you to be accountable for your actions. All right, another top trending story says, improve Nigeria's prison conditions, foundation urges federal governments and states. A non-governmental organization, the Foundation for Public Interest and Law Development, the Pro Bono Center, has called on the federal and state governments to urgently address the deplorable conditions of correctional centers across the country. The executive director of the foundation and human rights lawyer Yusuf Nuruddin made the call in a statement to commemorate the 2024 International Prisoners Justice Day, also appealing for improvements in the treatment of prisoners. International Prisoners Justice Day is marked on the 10th of August and it is dedicated to raising awareness about the plight of prisoners and the impact of incarceration on their families. Our foundation empathizes with inmates in the 253 correctional centers in Nigeria, particularly the 56,072 awaiting trial, representing 68% of the total population who are unlawfully incarcerated, dehumanized, stigmatized, and who have paid the ultimate price due to the deprivation of their fundamental human rights. Many of these injustices stem from a lack of access to their representation at the time of their trials. And he continued by saying, we feel it is crucial to remind the Minister of Interior about the deep lapidated conditions of our correctional centers. The foundation also highlighted the need for urgent reforms in the administration of criminal justice in the country, ensuring humane treatment and providing access to education, healthcare, and rehabilitation programs for prisoners. This is so apt, and I think this is, this is something that definitely needs to be discussed. The prisons are just deplorable. In fact, when you go there, you see prisoners having to ask or beg for money or beg for food because they feel, it seems like they're not being well catered for. Um, you know, correctional centers need a lot of work. And can we also talk about the people who are there who probably you know, have committed no crime, but then they're still there because let me just paint a picture for you. You're driving somewhere in Nigeria or you're just, you just find yourself somewhere and the police comes to raid. They're picking up almost everybody in that area. Whether you're a suspect or not, as long as you're in that vicinity, there's every possibility that you would also be picked up. And if no one comes to build you out, you'll be there for a long time. So there are so many people that are just there in the correctional centers 
having done nothing, having committed no crimes. So I think it's important that, you know, we start to look at our correctional facilities. Who are the people that are there who have committed no crimes? Can we start to sort out their files? Can we start to ensure that they're being bailed out, that they're being released as soon as possible? And the ones that are there that have committed any crime or another, I think we should just give them what is humane. Humanity is, you know, ensuring that the other person feels okay regardless of what the situation might be fine they might have you know committed a crime but the basic amenities should still be given to them most correctional centers do not have those basic amenities most of them they have to cramp themselves inside you know inside the prisons they probably do not have where to sleep it's it's the kind of food that is being given to them it's quite unfortunate and i'm sure that there's a lot of money there's a chunk of money that goes to this place for these people's welfare but where are those monies going to corruption eats so deeply in almost every sector which is quite sad and unfortunate because if money is being deployed to this um, correctional centers then it should be used for what it has been, been sent for so i think definitely the the interior minister the people who are you know who are in charge of all of this needs to start to look at the state of our correctional centers the prisons make sure that they have a better welfare going forward finally this is quite a sad one hurts men crisis farmers killed days after compensation in ondo state a farmer identified as sunday ayeni has been killed on his farm located at uba oko oka akoko in akoko southwest local government area of ondo state on sunday it was gathered that the lifeless body of the deceased was found on the farm with a machete cut on his body. The incident came a few days after the late farmer received compensation for his farm that was destroyed by cows of some herdsmen in the area. The source said in quote, the late farmer went to the farm with his dog as usual yesterday on Saturday, but he did not come on time. So this led to a search party who discovered his lifeless body in a pool of blood with his dog and cutlass beside him. He was stabbed and macheted by the assailants. Farmers in Uba Oka Akoka Akoko are now scared of going to their farms because of harassment attack. We want the government and the security agencies in the state to look into the security situation of our area, the community leader appealed. Um, it's quite sad and unfortunate because no one should be, no one should lose their lives, right? Um, no one should have their lives being cut short. And first, we'd like to, um, you know, give our sympathies to the family of this Sunday Ayoni who has been killed unlawfully. Now, he has just received compensation for his farm and... Of course, there's been some assailants, and that's why we really, really need to talk about insecurity. Insecurity is a big issue in our country. I want to believe that the government is trying their best, but I'm sorry, your best is just not good enough, and we need you to ramp it up right now. It is important that every Nigerian feels safe. How can I go to my farm and I do not feel safe? I get killed. There are so many people up north that cannot go to their farms. And in fact, you know, it has a ripple effect on the prices of goods in our, in, in our markets right now. The prices of food is so expensive because most farmers cannot go to their farms. So if we're not going to tackle insecurity as fast as we could, um, in fact, <laughs> I would say that it has already skyrocketed to a different place that we just never expected it to be but guess what it's going to get even much worse if we do not start to tackle it now so we're you know pleading at this point we're not we're not we're not demanding what what, what kind of demanding but we're also pleading in as much as we're demanding we're also pleading with the government make sure that you know we feel safe in our country so many people are moving away if you ask many people who have moved abroad, one of the major issues they speak about is insecurity. Aside the fact that, you know, the economy is where it is right now, is crippling. Aside the fact that, of course, there's no good health care because if you are sick in Nigeria, well, I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't, it might just be God that would help you at the moment to get better. If you were involved in, a, in an accident, before you get to the hospital, you might just pass away. Which is quite sad and unfortunate because for a country that is blessed with so much, we'd expect that all of these things should just be there. It should just be a system that works. But like I was saying, so many people move away for different reasons. Number one, majorly, is insecurity. 
then not so great healthcare, not so great education, not so great economy, the list is endless. But my point is we need to tackle insecurity because there's no way I would want to remain in a country or I would want to remain in, in a place where I don't feel safe. And if we're saying that we want foreign investors to come in or we want tourism um, to, to boom in our nation, most people would not come to a place where they don't feel safe, where they might just get killed. So we need to tackle this head on right now. There's so many terrorists out there. There's so many kidnappers out there. There's so many people who are trying to cause mayhem and havoc. Why can't we arrest them? Why can't they face the justice, um, justice system? Why can't we put them away and make sure that we have a sane country? Please, we're pleading to the government. It's so sad that um, Mr. Sunday Ayeni had to lose his life this way um, while going to his farm. He was just going about his day's job. And this is what has happened to him. I'm wondering whether, I'm sure there should be some policemen around in that vicinity. Where were they? Where were they? Please, we need to tackle insecurity as quickly as possible so that it doesn't get worse than it is right now. And once again, um, you know, my sincere sympathies to the family. We hope that God will give you the fortitude to bear this loss. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us. <laughs>